Welcome to today's RFM6 online training for students. The topic today is introduction to steel design. I will be the moderator today. My name is Andreas Hörold. I'm responsible for marketing and public relations in the company Global Software. For instance, for the German and English webinars, technical content of the website, newsletters, and so on. I will be supported by my colleague Sandy Matula. He's responsible. Uh, she's responsible for customer support. Yeah, and she will answer your questions. You can ask questions uh, via this panel. I switch off my webcam that you can see the full screen. Yeah, please press this button with the question mark, then enter your question here. Press send, and Sandy will receive your question and she will answer you. The other way is to watch the entire online training and then email your questions to info at global.com. That's the content today. At first, I say something about the theoretical background. Then we turn to an introductory example, a two-span beam. Then the next part or next point is imperfections and stability proofs in the ultimate limit state. And then we turn to a second example, a flat half frame. So, okay. At first I say something about the products for the design according to EC3. Yeah, the most important add-on is the steel design add-on. And now yeah, with that add-on, you can design steel members according to international standards like Eurocode, AISC, and so on. Now yeah, we use or we calculate or design according to Eurocode today. Then there's the add-on torsional warping. With that add-on, you can consider the seventh uh, degree of freedom yeah, and the torsional warping. Then steel joints, with that add-on, you can analyze steel joints based on the finite element method. Then there's the cross-section program, R-section. Then the add-on structure stability, we use that add-on in the second example. Then there's the add-on nonlinear material behavior. Yeah, you can, for example, consider a plastic design of steel plates or so on and so on. And then there's the add-on stress strain analysis. Okay. Then a little insight into the whole safety concept in steel construction. Uh, the, the actions should always be smaller than the resistance. Uh, those are the actions, so the, this is the resistance. And in addition, we have yeah, certain coefficients that we have to take into account depending on what type of proof is used. You can see the different um, coefficients here. And those are the co coefficients for the German National Annex. And you can see there is for the stability analysis another um, coefficient, a safety coefficient. But if you select the German National Annex, for example, or another uh, uh, national annex, yeah, this um, yeah, coefficient is yeah, considered automatically from the program. Yeah, you, it's yeah, automatically. Yeah. So, okay, then the next slide. Elas elastic or plastic global analysis. Whether an elastic or plastic calculation is possible always depends on the cross-section classes. There are four cross-section classes. 
the first cross-section class, there is a high rotational capacity, and this allows a plastic structure calculation. Now, for example, you can consider plastic hinges, but uh, yeah, it's not so often used in the in the praxis. And the cross-section resistance can be applied uh, applied plastically. Cross-section class two, where is a low rotation capacity, this allows uh, allows an elastic structure calculation. And as with cross-section class one, um, a cross-sectional resistance can also be applied plastically. Uh, for, uh, the first and the second uh, cross-section class where you can um, consider a, a plastic cross-section resistance. Then cross-section class three and four allow an elastic structure analysis and the cross-sectional resistance can only be applied elastically. For cross-section class four, uh, only a reduced uh, yeah, cross-section resistance, the effective cross-section. Okay, what you what's important to, to you um, in the praxis? Uh, yeah, mostly you do an elastic global analysis. It's not very often that one um, consider, for example, plastic hinges. Yeah. And what's important to you is that the first two cross-section classes where you can be yeah, calculated plastically or designed plastically with the cross-section resistance plastic and the cross-section class three and four where can uh, the, the cross-sectional resistance can only be applied elastically. Okay, then we turn to the next slide. That's the first example, the two-span beam. Uh, now with a, a field length of 12 meters, 12 meters right, uh, left and 12 meters right. A beam IPE 550, steel S235, a self-weight load case, and a load case with an imposed load. And we will yeah, calculate or do a cross-section classification, cross-section design checks. Yeah, the, different between, the difference between the elastic and plastic cross-section resistance uh, we uh, take a look at the design checks, elastic, elastic, and elastic, plastic. Okay, I turn to Afem. That's the second example. It's already prepared. But for the first example, I um, yeah, model the complete model or the complete structure. File new. So. I enter zero one two span beam. Okay, then type of model two D is sufficient. We consider only members, but you can also select surfaces. That doesn't matter. And we select the steel design add-on. Okay. Then we need to select the standards. You can see there are for the load case classification and the steel design, different international standards. We select the Euro code. And for uh, today, we are in Germany here, we select the German national annex. Okay. We don't use the load results, but we yeah, use the load case classification and the steel design. 
we leave the dialog with OK. So I turn to the view minus Y. Move it a little bit. So the grid is one meter. I leave that. If you want to change that, you can click on this here at the bottom. Display grid. Right click and then edit. And you can change the space for the grid points. So I start with the beam. You left above, new single member. I need to define a section. Yeah, create new section. I turn to the library. Left both an I beam. Uh, if I am too quick for you, uh, yeah, that doesn't matter. Where is a recording? When you want to enter the structure by yourself, you can use the recording and the finished models. In yeah, the next days, you will get an email with all with the recording and the models and so on, the PowerPoint slides. Just take a look what I show. <laughs> That's sufficient. Okay. I select uh, IPE 550 and right at the bottom I open the material library and I select uh, European Union steel, carbon steel. Now uh, there are a lot of steel. Uh, materials. I use the steel material S235. Okay, you can see now the color is blue. That's okay. So I create a member with a length of 24 meters and I divide the member in the middle. With right click, members, and divide member and intermediate nodes. One intermediate nodes, and that I yeah, create a node without dividing the member. I select this option here create on member nodes without dividing member. Okay, that's the note. So then I create the supports. Here left above, assign nodal support. So I press the edit button to take a look if all is okay. Yes, we support in an X direction and in Z direction. Okay, and this node is quite a little bit small. With a right click, I can increase the size of the support. Okay, that's enough. So next support, I select the second support and press the edit button. Yeah, we don't uh, want to fix the ro rotation for the support, and we deselect the yeah, fi the fixing in X direction. We only want to support the member in Z direction. Okay. So that's all for the model. I create the loads. <clears throat> we have a self aid load case. I select the edit active load case. The self aid uh, load case is automatically created yeah, for every model. So, and you can see also the self weight of the structure is activated. Yeah, that's correct in our case. So, and above. Yeah, this button, 
new member load. And our load should be a force, uniform. You can see there are yeah, different options. And the load direction should be in set direction, uh, in this direction. So in the load magnitude, should be eight kilonewton per meter. Okay. So then I create a new load case with that button. I call it imposed load. And I select the action category, not permanent, but imposed loads. Okay. Okay, then I have to create the load for this load case, new member load, and this time 12 kilonewton per meter. Okay, that's all for the model and for the loads. I open the load cases and combinations dialog again, this time over the navigator data with a right click load cases and combinations. There are the base data. Now at the beginning we selected the standard group Eurocode and the German national NAS and we activated the combination wizard. Those are my two load cases. We've got only two uh, actions. Now that's quite important when you have, for example, four wind load cases, then there's only one action for the wind load cases. And yeah, you can uh, combine in the load combinations either wind in minus x or wind in plus x and so on. Okay. So then there are the design situations. We would like to yeah, design only according to ultimate limit state. That's why I delete the design situations for the serviceability limit state. And what's important, we need to activate the steel design. So, and there are only two load combinations. And if I turn back to the design situations and to the overview, we are only, or we are uh, assigned these two load combinations for the yeah, design situation, ultimate limit state design. So then we can calculate all. Also the steel design. At first we take a look at the internal forces and the navigator results on the left side. The V set, for example, I can also select only the maximum values, not minimum and maximum. So B set and M Y. So, and then we can go to the table at the bottom and to the steel design. An error is displayed after the calculation. This is because we haven't made any steel design settings yet. We are only inter interested in the cross section verification here. Now, therefore, yeah, the, we change to the table design ratios and members. So there's the section proof for shear and for bending. And you can see a, a plastic design were done for the program. So if I select the line and press this button, design check details, this um, yeah, dialog is opened. 
students uh, request for a deta detailed present uh, presentation of the proofs is now possible. You can see the you know, uh, equations and where you can find it in the standard. Okay, then cross-section classification. You can see where is uh, the, the, the cross-section is classified in class one. That's why a plastic design is possible. So we can also take a look at the result diagram, the design ratio, the stresses. That's the stress in the in the middle or over the middle support. And where is uh, tension uh, at the top and compression at the bottom of the cross section. So yeah, okay, that's all. Can I show also maybe the cross section information? the stress points, the different sub panels for the cross-section classification, the, the, the C's uh, to T um, parts. Okay. That's all. Now in the same, you can also, yeah, if you want to check the proof for the shear, you can either press that button or double click on the line and you can see the equations from the standard. Okay, now we uh, don't want to do a plastic, but an elastic design. How to do that? I turn left at the bottom to the navigator data. Then to I open the steel design folder and the ultimate configurations. And I double click on it. Yeah, and then I can, for example, uncheck the stability design. Then this error message don't appear, but ah, doesn't matter. I select that button here. Elastic design also for class one and class two sections. Yeah, it's allowed to do a plastic design for class one and two, but yeah, in this case, we would like to do an elastic design also for the cross section class one. In our case, the cross section is cross section uh, class one. Okay, we calculate or rerun the steel design again. And I select design ratios and members. I remember we had an, a design ratio for the plastic design of uh, 84% and now we have got 94% yeah, because we do an elastic design. And if I double click on it, I can see the equation. Okay, what you can um, you know, hold in your mind is that we can do every time an elastic design. Uh, we can consider the elastic cross-section resistance. That's what we did in the yeah uh, in the second step in that step here. Yeah, so we have now learned how to carry out a cross-section check and how to take the elastic and plastic design into account. Yeah, at first, the plastic design, at in the second step, the elastic design, because elastic design is allowed for all cross-sections. And in addition, we now know how to display the design formulas and compare them with our own manual calculation. Then 
to then return to the next topic for today effects of deformed geometry of the structure in the first training course introduction to member design it was learned how the results can differ between the calculation according to the first order theory and uh, the geometrical linear analysis and the second order theory yeah, the Geometrical linear analysis is an uh, equilibrium formation on the undeformed system. And the second order analysis is an uh, equilibrium formation on the deformed system. Now, in, in this example of the uh, cantilever column, this effect can be seen very well on the basis of a slender that's the slender and the, and the compact cross section. In the case of the slender column, the increase in the bending moment at the foot point is much larger than in the case of the compact column. Yeah, if one calculates according to the second order theory. And there's no difference when you yeah, apply the geometrical linear analysis. So, and for steel construction, there's a value that defines when a structure should be calculated geometrical linear or according to the second order analysis. If the critical load factor alpha crit is less than 10, the system must be calculated according to the second order uh, analysis. And in this case, is, is written in, this, in that way, alpha crit larger than 10, then it's sufficient to apply the geometrical linear analysis for an elastic design. And if you want to do a plastic design, the alpha crit must be, uh, if that is larger than 15, then you can also design according to the geometrical linear analysis. Okay. So then the next point is the equivalent geometric imperfections. Imperfections are also closely related to this topic. Here we have the imperfections in Eurocode 3, and these are generally grouped together as an equivalent geometric imperfections. Yeah, maybe first of all, what are imperfections anyway? Imperfections are yeah, production related deviations in the model geometry and or in the um, material properties. Yeah, on the one hand, uh, there can be real misalignments in classic hall constructions or, or tolerances in production especially when world sections are used. Now, and these imperfections can be summarized as equivalent geometric imperfections. Now, on, the, on the left side of the graphic, you can see the initial sway, the global imperfection that can be applied to the structure. And if individual uh, components are yeah, to be examined more closely, where is the local equivalent imperfection, for example, over an initial bow imperfection? And this depends on the selected profile, the yield point, the buckling curves, curves um, and the proof method. Yeah, and these two variants are possibly of the equivalent geometric imperfections. Another alternative is pre-deformation, which can be calculated with the help of stability analysis. The respective governing eigenmode is scaled and applied as an imperfection. That's not so often used, but it's possible. The 
uh, what you often use is the initial sway imperfection or the initial bow imperfection or both. That can you see in a later slide. When designing steel in RFM, three different stability analyses are carried out. On the left side, where's the classic flexural buckling as a lateral deflection. Then in the middle, you can see the torsional buckling in a you know, pure tension. And on the right side, the lateral torsional buckling as a combination of the two previous proofs. Okay, methods for stability analysis. There are three methods. Uh, method A, you have to apply a global and local imperfection and the structure analysis should be done uh, with the second order analysis. And then you can do the cross-section design checks yeah, with the internal forces. Method B, global imperfection, yeah, means uh, only this initial sway imperfection. So, and then the structure analyze according to second order analysis. And what's quite important, uh, you have to consider the, um, the buckling length by the member length, not with a factor. SK is, uh, is equal length. Okay. Then method C, structure analyze according to geometrical linear analysis on the ideal structure, but in that case with the real buckling length. Okay. Yeah, and important to method C is the um, structure component design can be carried out for flexible buckling with the internal forces according to the geometrical linear analysis, which were determined on the ideal stru structure without the use of imperfections. Yeah. But in that case here for the frame, only uh, for the columns. Yeah. Because by considering the system, the system buckling lengths, the moment agrees according to the second order analysis and the effect of the equivalent imperfections are already taken into account. But uh, that's also a sentence in the Euro code uh, for, for the design of the later uh, torsional buckling, the application of the second order analysis is also required with that method. Now, uh, if, if you want to do an uh, later a torsional buckling design for the horizontal beam, then you need also for this method to calculate according to second order analysis. We show also this method because we know uh, in the stu stadium you have to yeah, define the real buckling lengths. And yeah, I would like to show that method that you can see how to determine the buckling lengths. Yeah, and in the next example, I will also show the method B. Yeah, what's for, for the practical use? Yeah, it's often used in the, in the praxis. And also method A, yeah, and method C, well, seldom or yeah, more in the stadium. Okay, that's the flat house frame. The second example, you could see it's all already defined in, in RFM. Also material S235, uh, you can see the different lengths, 12 meters, 15 meters, 12 meters. That's a frame. And uh, then uh, where are uh, yeah, columns? And those are 
hinged columns yeah, on the uh, left side and on the right side. Yeah, and you can see a hinge, a hinge, a hinge, a hinge. Okay. So that's all for the introduction. Okay, a snow load case. I can show that in the, in the program as well. And the tasks uh, for this example is to apply imperfections and we will do a stability analyzer according to method B and method C. I start with method C without imperfections and then I turn to method B and where are the imperfections necessary. Now we can turn back to the slide. That's with the determination of the buckling lengths and that's uh, and without imperfections and method B with imperfections. Okay, so then I turn to the program, to the predefined example. So that's the construction self-weight load case, then a snow load case, with loads, for example, from purlins and a wind load case. Wind in X direction with wind pressure and wind suction. Uh, left above, I go to or turn to the base data, a T 2D model, and we use the add-ons structure, stability, and the steel design add-on. And we select the standards Eurocode and the German National Annex. Okay, so yeah, and we, we use the add-on structure stability to check whether we are allowed to determine the internal forces according to the geometrical linear or second order analysis. That's why we turn to the load cases and combinations. And I go directly to the design situations. I select the geometrical linear analysis and I turn or I edit that and I activate the stability analysis. Okay, and I run the calculation. So, so and after the calculation, we see the minimum uh, critical load factor. 6.05 for the design situation and 6 is smaller than 10. Now we need to do a stability design by using the second order analysis. Yeah, but what I already mentioned for the stability design using the classic equivalent bar method uh, means method C, the internal forces can be calculated according to geometrical linear analyzing and yeah, buckling lengths must be assigned to the columns. Yeah, uh, but for the design of the lateral uh, bar torsional buckling, the application of the second order analysis is also required with this me method. That's why I switch to the second order uh, analysis. For the columns, yeah, we can we consider then the effect yeah, twice. Yeah, one time with the second order analysis and with the real buckling length. But we need to do um, the second order um, or need to apply the second order analysis because of the horizontal beam and the lateral torsional buckling. So, but let's take a look at first to uh, to the buckling lengths. I turn to the 
stability analysis. So, and then results by member. It was a combination number three. So, and then I can see the effective lengths and critical, critical loads by member. So, this column has a, an effective length factor of three. This column, yeah, we apply also three for this column. And for the left and the right column, 1.72. Okay. So I turn back to the design situation and we run, uh, or we, we use the second order analysis. Okay, that's okay. So, and now we apply the, or we, we define the effective lengths, or we assign them to the um, columns. I select the inner columns, then I do a right click, members, edit. And I turn to the design configurations and design types, no, design types. And I define effective lengths. So I, I would like to mention that you can also import the buckling length from the stability analysis. Now we don't do that in that example. So then nodal supports an effective length. I define the effective length of three meter, uh, of the effective length factor of three. Okay. Okay. Then I select the left and the right column. I press the control, control key. You can see the plus sign. Now I would like to consider or select both columns. Then right click, members, edit. The same procedure, design types effective lengths and 1.72. Okay. And you can display the um, effective lengths. Then we go to the dis navigator display then types for steel design, and I select member effective lengths. And you can see the factor three and 1.72. So then I select the inner horizontal beam by right click, members, edit, then Design types, effective lengths. I create a new effective length. So this time we would like to consider the horizontal supports. Yeah, for example, by Perlins. That's why I press this button here, select member or member set. I select this member and uh, the program will detect all these nodes here. Okay, you can see that here. And we would like to uh, yeah, fix it in horizontal direction. And I would like to consider that the upper flange is supported. Yeah, the purlins lay over the horizontal beam or the, yeah. Okay, that's why I select 
all these lines here and I define eccentricity type at upper flange. Okay, I can leave the dialog and you can see the supports. Gable support at the beginning and at the end. And for the inner nodes, there are only a horizontal support at the upper flange yeah, by the purlins. So, okay. We need to do the same for the left horizontal beam and the right one. I select both with the control key. Then members edit. And I select the same uh, effective length uh, as for the middle horizontal beam. And you can see the program detects automatically that there are only three nodes. I can see three nodes are supported and four nodes. Okay, then we can run the calculation. I turn to steel design and press this button, show results, and the calculation starts. So the calculation is done. We have a maximum design ratio of 84%, stability, bending, and buckling about principal axis. So I can double click on it and you can see the design checks, yeah, the equations, and where you can find it in the standard. Okay, this was the classic uh, structural component design, method C without imperfections, but effective member lengths. Now we want to examine the model using the approach of global imperfections and the structural component design method B. I turn back to the PowerPoint. We did method C yeah, with the effective member lengths and without imperfections. And now we define imperfections and I delete the effective member lengths for the columns. Yeah, we say, well, we consider SK equal member length. Okay, I turn back to the program. Left at the bottom, I go to the, or turn to the navigator data, then types for the steel design, effective lengths. Or I let me save that state, save as out results. So without imperfections. Okay, I overwrite it. So and now I delete the effective member lengths for or the buckling lengths for the um, uh, columns. Delete. Okay. And in the second step, I need to define imperfections. So above here, that button, new member imperfection. I have to create an imperfection case in the first step. Imp X. We've got imperfections and imperfection cases. You can consider more imperfections in one case. Yeah, that's why we have imperfection cases and imperfections. That's the case. Okay. And now we create the imperfection for that imperfection case. We define an initial sway. 
define type is Eurocode 3. In the imperfect direction is set uh, in the strong axis. Then the basic value is 200. I can measure the structure height. Eight meters, number of columns in one row, those are four. Yeah, and the reduction factors uh, are calculated automatically. Okay, and I need to assign it to all four columns. And to display it, I have to uh, press this button above show imperfections so and now we can run the calculation or well, before i do that i take a look at in the design situation your know, second order analysis or second order yeah second order analysis and it must be checked that the program considers the imperfection cases. Okay, now well, we can calculate all. So we go directly to the steel design. So design ratios on members. Yeah, and you can see the design ratios. With the, with the method C, we had a design ratio of 84%. Now we've got 86%. That's quite similar, you know, different methods. Okay, yeah. That should be all for today. Yeah, we, yeah, you learned in the second example how you can apply the method C in the, in the first step and then with imperfections with the method B in the second step. Yeah, and as I already mentioned, you will get an email in the next days with your attendee certificate. And then you can watch the recording if you want. You can download the models that I saved. Yeah, I hope you could learn a little bit in this online training. I still have an additional hint for you. If you would like to do your internship in our company or you like to work as a work student or you would like to start your career after your study yeah, in Tiefenbach, Leipzig or Munich, then yeah, we, you are welcome. You can press that link here for more information or you can uh, scan that QR code to uh, reach the career page, uh, page on our website. Yeah, just do it. Okay, that should be all for today. I wish you all a nice rest of the day. Thank you for your attention. Thanks to Sandy for your support. Bye-bye.